Hi everybody, this is Mr. RB. I'm here to show you how to use one point perspective to make a letter V appear three dimensional. Here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna start by creating a horizon line. And the horizon line today, I'm putting high up on my page. The horizon line will separate the sky above from the ground below, and of course, it's also our eye level. This means anything above, we'd be looking up at sort of the bottom of it if it's high enough up. Think the bottom of a plane flying by. And if it's below, think of a box sitting on the floor. We could see the top of the box, but we would not see the bottom. That's because it's below our eye level. All right, I'll also need a vanishing point somewhere on this horizon line. And for today, I'm gonna to put mine all the way over to the left. Next, I need to draw a bubble letter V. I'm drawing just very straightforward sort of V, nothing too fancy. I want to make it easier to see what the, what the um, perspective lines and angles are doing. And so I'm drawing a line V. I'm going to add a top to each of those legs going in horizontally. One, oops, two, and then I'm going to get the smaller V in the middle to complete my bubble letter V. The bubble letter is still two-dimensional. It has length, it has width, but it does not have or even appear to have depth. It doesn't seem to go back in space. We're going to create the illusion that this does have depth, that it's a three-dimensional form with length, width, and even depth going back in space. Here's how. I'm going to use my vanishing point, put my pencil on my vanishing point, my ruler on my pencil, and I'm going to pivot until I touch a corner of the V. First one I touched was the very bottom point. This may not be true for you, but go with whatever you see on yours. I connect to the vanishing point. It'll depend on how you draw your V and where you place it relative to the vanishing point. Each drawing is different. Next, I'm gonna put my, vanishing, my pencil back on the vanishing point, ruler on the pencil, and I'm going to continue to pivot right through the P until I get to another corner. Oh, I hit the top left corner. Over here, top left corner of the top left leg. I'm going to connect that to the vanishing point. Notice I have two lines starting at different places, but they both end up at the vanishing point. That's important. The distance between these lines keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And one of the basic ideas of perspective is that things appear to get smaller as they go back in space. And that's what happens in the real world. So in drawing world, we're making things get smaller as they go towards the vanishing point, so it will appear that they're further away. They're not really. It's still just a flat piece of paper, but it creates the illusion. All right, let's get back to work. Now, I have this wall going all the way back to the horizon as far as a person could see. But I don't really want it going that far. I'm going to cut it off. And the way I'm going to do that is create an, a, a line that does the same thing as this front edge, but just a little further back in space. In this case, just a, further, a little bit further towards the vanishing point. I'm going to put my ruler right on that line of the V slide my ruler over towards the vanishing point a little and create another line. It should be parallel to this front edge. Front edge, back edge. They should be parallel. No matter how long you do them, they would never meet. Well, let's get rid of the extra bit of work line. Beyond that vertical, beyond that parallel line, we don't want people to see our vanishing lines. We're going to make them vanish. All right, we've got one side of the V, a little messy, but it's there. 
Now I'm ready to do the top. I need to do the top of this leg and then we'll do the top of this leg. And we'll check about the bottom here. Let's take a look. I put my ruler on the van uh, pencil on the vanishing point, ruler on the pencil. I pivot until I get to a new corner. Oh, there it is. And I connect. When I look at the front edge, it's a horizontal line like the horizon. I put my ruler on that edge, on that line. I slide up till I get to my corner. And I'm just going straight across. As much as we know that this is just flat paper, it sure starts to look like though it's a three-dimensional V going back in space. Let's do the other side too. I'm going to darken that in because we're keeping that line. All right, pencil on the paper, ruler on the pencil. Ooh, you know, there is this corner down here, but see how if I drew that in, right down to the bottom of the V, it would go through the letter. I'm not going to draw that because I'm thinking that this V is made out of concrete, metal, or wood, something we wouldn't see through ordinarily. If I was drawing a glass giant letter V, then I would still need that lead, that line. I don't need it now. If I was drawing, a, say, an aquarium for fish, I might need the back lines, but not if I'm drawing a cinder block. All right, let's keep going. Pencil on vanishing point, ruler on pencil. Pivot the ruler. Oh, I hit a corner. I connect. I pivot again, hit the other corner. I connect. Two more lines going back to that same vanishing point. Now I need whatever's over here in the front edge. I need it in the back edge. Let's figure that out. Well, it's a horizontal like the other one. I'm going to slide up and I want mine to match that first leg. So I'm just going to make it even with this one over here. I'll just make a line going across and whee, there you go. Wow. Notice the top and bottom lines are parallel. What do I mean by that? The top and bottom line of that shape are parallel. They would go forever without ever meeting. The left side and right side point towards the same vanishing point, and those would meet. They do seem to be getting smaller as they go back in space. All right, we need one more line. And that's going to be, we have this line, this diagonal, connecting the front corner of this leg to the uh, bottom of the V shape. We need one over here. And I have to say, the simplest way I found, I'm just going to put my ruler, or straight edge, on the line, so it lines up. And then I'm just going to slide straight back towards my vanishing point until I get to that corner here. And I'm going to put it in. And that's it. I have my V. I can add a little tone to the side. The darker your shadows are, the brighter your light will seem. If your drawings are looking a little bit dull, could be that you lack dark darks and white whites. That contrast really adds drama and excitement and visual interest to your drawings. It just gets a little hard looking at drawings that are all sort of medium light. We need that full range to keep things working. I'm also going to add a little tone over here. I'm going to use my pen, my ruler rather, as a guide so I don't go over the edge. But I can just very quickly. By the way, notice I'm using the side of my pencil tip. I'm not using the point of it, but the side. I like how it's easier to smear, easier to erase, and uh, it goes quicker, which I kind of like. All right, we've got some nice tone there. A little woodsy over there, but we'll get that smoothed in. I want to put some tone on the face of the V, the original bubble letter that I drew. 
The reason I'm doing this is I want to get the get the feeling that the sun is up in the sky. Oops. Shining brightly down on the V. And therefore the top or roof is very bright. Well, I can't really make this any whiter than the white paper it started out for. So the only way I can make this seem brighter is by putting some gray around it. And the darker those grays get, the brighter that white will seem. Which makes sense. You know, when you look at a spotlight on a stage, that one spotlight in the middle of the dark theater seems so bright. But if you turn up all the lights in the theater and the house and everything, suddenly it doesn't seem so bright anymore. It's all relative. A little contrast can bring things to your attention so easily. All right, I'm going to erase that just a little and redraw that line. I like to put my darkest, boldest lines close to the viewer on the things that seem nearest because darker, bolder, brighter things, more intense colors all tend to come forward. So bolder, darker, brighter, whiter tend to jump forward. And I'm going to use that by creating those darker lines in the front to bring the front of my V seemingly closer. Last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little pool of shadow using again my side of my tip, side tip of my pencil. And I'm going to get, there are ways to use perspective to figure out the length and direction of a shadow and even to help with getting the right shape. But today we're just going to lay in a little bit of tone just to give a general illusion that there's some shadow there. Just want a little sort of oval shaped patch. All right. Well, there's a V. I hope you have very much fun drawing your Vs. <laughs> Feel free to combine them with some other letters and see what you can come up with words as well. You can always add other details and uh, create your own storyline. Enjoy, and I'll be back with you soon. Bye bye, everybody.